or this afternoon. <laughs> like to welcome each one out. Uh, thankful that the Lord has held off the rain for us. I believe He's going to hold it off and give us just a little bit of time. Uh, but we're thankful today that He has done that for us. We're thankful uh, for the family that donated this wonderful tent uh, to us. Um, all I can figure is they didn't like our makeshift uh, uh, plastic one that we had built a couple of weeks ago and somebody had mercy on us and, uh, and bought us this and donated it to the church. But we, we do appreciate that. Um, we appreciate all of you. We are stuck in here on both sides this morning uh, and we're thankful to have you out here. But I want you to know this morning and what's on my heart, I can't stand under this tent. Uh, what's on my heart this morning is, is Memorial Day weekend. And the reason that we can be here doing what we're doing this morning is because some men and women did for us what not everybody was willing to do. And I'm thankful for the freedom that I have to worship. I'm thankful this morning that I can come and not have to worry about somebody coming in here and trying to shut this down or, and haul us all off to jail or, or put us out and, and try to cut or kill us or, or do anything like that, that we can come boldly uh, because of the freedom that we have here in this country. I'm thankful for some men, Doug, uh, that when everybody's running away from a fire, they're running to it. Uh, I'm thankful for some men and women uh, that when there's a mass shooting going on, uh, when everybody else is running away, uh, they're running toward it. Uh, bless God, there were some men and women uh, that were willing uh, to go overseas and fight uh, so the fight didn't come to us. Uh, and because of that this morning, uh, you and I can stand here uh, on this parking lot uh, and raise our hands toward heaven uh, and thank God for the freedom uh, that we have uh, that other countries don't have. Uh, we may not be uh, what we ought to be, uh, but we're not a communist nation. Uh, we're not a nation uh, where Christians are in fear uh, of somebody breaking in their homes uh, and hauling them off uh, because some men and women paid the ultimate sacrifice for us. We would do them a great disservice this morning if we didn't stand and honor them and thank them for what they've done. Now this is Memorial Day weekend. Doug and I were talking the other day. This is Memorial Day weekend. This is in remembrance of those that paid the ultimate sacrifice. Those that gave their life. Those that went to another country and never came home. So I think this morning in this parking lot we ought to stand and honor that. And I'm going to go to the Lord in prayer and I'm going to thank Him. Thank Him for what we have here this morning. Heavenly Fathers, we come to You this morning. God, we're thankful for You. Lord, we're thankful for this nation that we live in. And we're thankful for some men and women that paid the ultimate sacrifice. Lord, there are children today at home without a mother and a father because they were out defending our freedom. We're thankful today, Father God, for you. Lord, we pray now throughout this weekend, God, that you would comfort those that are still in mourning. God, that you would be with them. God, that you would help them. And God, that we could show honor to them by coming to worship. That we could show honor to them by lifting up our voice, Lord, in praise. We just ask today, Father God, that you would be with our church. And God, be with so many other churches that are honoring this weekend, those men and women. We just ask God that you would help us, Lord. Help us to always remember, Lord, when we grumble and complain about situations that have arisen in our country, things could always be far worse if it wasn't for some people that were willing to go. I'm thankful for you today, Father. God, I'm thankful for mercy and I'm thankful for grace. And I ask today that you be with us, Lord, on this parking lot. 
God, that you would be in our message this morning, Jesus. Be with the singers that have come, Lord. God, if there be one here this morning that's lost and undone, God, that they would come today, Father, to know you, to trust you, to believe in you. We just ask, God, that you'll continue to be with us, help us, lead us, guide us, and direct us. We are so thankful for you this morning. We bless you, Father, and, and praise you for all things. For it's in your sweet and precious holy name that we pray this afternoon. It's in Jesus' name. Amen. We want to praise him three times and we're going to get a congregational. What number is that? It doesn't matter. You guys don't have books. Let's praise him three times. Right? Are you ready? Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! Praise the Lord! As they come this morning.
As Tyler and Maria come to sing, if you've got a testimony this morning, you stand and give it. If you've got a song this morning, and we're not, we're not, we don't have a schedule. Uh, I, I may have singers lined up, but that's not what. If God wants a song sung and you've got it, you come and give that song this morning. Uh, we want to have church. We're not here to entertain you. I can't do it. I don't have that that uh, that kind of message this morning, Amen. I don't I don't have that kind of uh, ability to try to, to woo you and, and all. I've got a message from God this morning that I plan on preaching, uh, and they're going to sing this morning. But if you've got something that God wants you to do, you need to do that here this morning, just as if we were inside. Uh, and I guarantee you, when you leave this service here on this parking lot, you'll be able to say, "Man, I was in church today. Uh, man, I had church today." Uh, so as they sing this morning, if you've got something. You stand and give it. Bless your hands. It's your heart. Bless your heart, Nancy.
Turn your Bibles this morning to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12 this morning. I want to take another opportunity this morning to thank the Lord. Amen. Now, we have had, uh, I don't even know, I think six or seven weeks of outdoor services. Curtis and... <laughs> it ain't rained on us yet. It's rained before and it's rained after, but it's not rained on us yet. So I want to thank the Lord. We've had like 12 services. We did some evening services outside, and it's not rained. Not the first time. You say, what are you going to do if it starts raining right now? I'm going to step back out of this tent, and I'm going to praise the Lord for the, the 12 services that we already had that it didn't rain. Now, I believe too often, church, our praise is based on our circumstances. Too often our praise is based on what's happening in our life right now. Our praise is not based on what's happening in our life right now. Our, bra our praise is based on something that never changes. Uh, our praise is based on, bless God, uh, salvation uh, that never changes. Uh, a Savior uh, that never changes. Uh, our praise is based upon the Lord. Uh, he said, I am the Lord uh, and I change not. Uh, our praise is based on Him. Uh, so our praise should never change. Even though circumstances changed around us. And I want to thank Him this morning for what He's done for us. I mean, He's been good for us. He's been good to us. Now, if you think for a minute we deserve for Him to not let it rain, we don't deserve that. But God, who is rich in mercy and in love, bless God, I'm thankful that I serve a God who doesn't just have love, He doesn't have mercy, but He's rich in mercy and He's rich in love and He knows exactly what I need at all times and He's able to give that to us. We're going to preach this morning on obstacles that get in our way. Obstacles that get in our way. Going to uh, Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to start in verse 1 this morning. This afternoon. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before Him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down on the right hand of God, on the throne of right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when ye are rebuked of him, when ye are rebuked of him, for whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. If ye endure chastening, God dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the Father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. Furthermore, we have not fathers of our flesh which corrected us, and we gave them reverence, shall we not much rather be in subjection unto the Father of spirits and live? You can be seated this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come to You, Lord, we stand in a place once again we cannot do a thing on our own. God, we stand in a place right now, Lord, where we need Your anointing, we need Your touch, we need Your spirit, we need Your help. And God, we pray right now in this parking lot, God, that You would just supply as only You can. God, that you would give the very message that we as a church need. 
Lord, we do not need a motivational speech this morning. God, we don't need a message out of a briefcase or something found on Google. God, we need a message from You. We need a word from God. And I believe this morning, Father, You're able to give us that this morning, which we stand in need of. That God, with one message, You can touch every heart on this parking lot this morning. With one word, you can handle every situation that is in each individual life here on this parking lot. We ask, God, that you would help us, Lord, and God, that any glory, any honor, and any praise would go directly to you, Lord, would not come to me, but would go to you this morning, Father, who had given all things, Lord, and upholdeth all things, Father, Lord. We know this morning that you're able, Lord, to give us that which we stand in need of. And when God will not cease to give you the glory, to give you the honor, and to give you the praise that you so deserve, it's in your name that we pray. It's in your name that we ask. It's in the lovely name of Jesus. Amen. I want to preach on obstacles this morning that get, this afternoon, that get in our way. Obstacles. And the Bible says there, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us easily beset us uh, what i look at there jake is i'm looking at something that gets in our way something that stops us something that slows us down something that may cause us to stumble something that may cause us to trip something that may cause us to back up to hold up uh, amen something that may cause us to turn uh, that in which would be an obstacle uh, and for the last eight weeks in our lives uh, many of us have dealt with different obstacles uh, different situations uh, different circumstances uh, and those obstacles are things in our lives that get in our way, uh, that may slow us down at times. Uh, but bless God, there are times uh, things may slow us down in our life. Uh, they cannot uh, and will not stop us uh, unless we allow them to do so. Uh, but we want to preach on how to deal with obstacles in our lives. How to deal with obstacles in our lives. Uh, each one of us here this morning is on a journey. We're headed for heaven. We're on a journey. Uh, and from the moment you got saved, uh, you started on that journey for heaven. Uh, and it's not always been easy. Uh, and it's not always been uh, simple. Uh, there have been times that it's gotten difficult. Uh, there may have been times that the lines in your life, uh, they got blurred. Uh, but bless God, if you're saved this morning, uh, you're still on that journey. Uh, and you're on your way to heaven. And that's something to be thankful for. The Bible says in the book of Job in the 5th chapter and the 7th verse, Man is born of a woman, few days, and full of trouble. Now I've told you before, the Bible does not say there a lost man or a saved man. The Bible just simply says, man, born of a woman, few days, and full of trouble. Lost or saved this morning, you're going to go through troubles. You're going to go through heartaches. You're going to go through situations. Just because you were born, you're going to go through those things. But this is where we separate lost and saved right here on the parking lot this morning. In the Scriptures, the Bible says, Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but out of them all the Lord delivereth. That's what sets us apart. Uh, bless God, it doesn't matter uh, that we have affliction. What matters is because you've got the Lord, you've got someone to deliver. Uh, you've got someone to help. Uh, you've got someone to answer. Uh, you've got someone to give what's needed. Uh, you've got a friend to hold a hand. Uh, you've got a, a companion there to lift you up. Uh, oftentimes I think about uh, uh, old Cleopas in Luke 24. Uh, and what we'll find is uh, they're on their way uh, back from the crucifixion. Uh, and they're walking on their way to Emmaus. Uh, and they were broken, uh, downtrodden, uh, upset, uh, tore up. Uh, but there's about to be someone uh, who joins himself with them, uh, who steps on the scene, uh, who's able to help them, uh, give them companionship. Uh, bless God, give them communion. Uh, give them someone uh, that's going to help them in their time of need. Uh, and that same person uh, that walked up in their life uh, is the same person uh, in your difficulty uh, that'll walk up in your life uh, and answer your need uh, and provide for you and give you just exactly what you need in your time. But he'll answer the same way in your life he answered in their life. The Bible says he opened unto them the scriptures and expounded, just simply meaning preach, expounded unto them the things concerning himself. You say, well, what did Jesus preach 
to them walking on Emmaus, on that road to Emmaus. He preached Jesus. What is there to preach, Paul? Paul? He preached Jesus. Paul told him, he said, I, I would to know nothing save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Uh, I get so often, I get frustrated with preachers uh, and they want to grind an axe in the pulpit. Uh, they want to take a stance in the pulpit. Uh, and they want to use their, their position right there to try to drive home uh, some sort of uh, agenda. They want to try to drive home. Uh, bless God, it's time uh, that we get some preachers uh, that are concerned back with Jesus, uh, preaching Jesus, talking Jesus, uh, living Jesus, uh, and get off uh, all this uh, social injustice and all this other nonsense uh, and just get focused focused on Jesus. It's not about creed. It's not about color. It's not about nationality. It's about Jesus. And because of this flag, we live in a nation. It doesn't divide. It doesn't set apart. It's all about being a man after God's own heart. And if you want to be a Christian this morning, you're going to have to be like David. You're going to have to be a man after God's own heart. What we read about here is in the book of Psalms, he tells us many of the afflictions of the righteous. That means you're not just going to go through one heartache in your life. You're not just going to go through one difficulty in your life. You're not just going to go through one bump in the road in your life. But, but that many uh, afflictions are going to come upon us. Uh, but the same God uh, who provided uh, and through all throughout the Bible uh, is the same God we serve today. Uh, and He's able to provide. Uh, and He's able to answer. Uh, and He's able to supply if you'll trust in him this morning. We look at these obstacles that get in our way. Uh, and oftentimes, people run into obstacles just trying to get to Jesus. See, maybe this morning you don't know Him. Maybe this morning you're here and you're lost. And there may be obstacles in your life right now that are in your way of coming to know Jesus. There may be something in your life that you think because of this, because of this situation, this is why I can't be saved. Because of this circumstance, this is why I can't be saved. I would love to be a Christian. I would love to be saved. Uh, but you don't understand. People come to me all the time. They say, you don't understand, preacher. Uh, I've got this going on. You don't understand, preacher. Uh, I, I live this life. I've done this. I've done that. Uh, I'm telling you, the Bible says, whosoever uh, shall call upon the name of the Lord uh, shall be saved. Uh, bless God, there's no stipulation with that. Uh, other than uh, you calling on the name of the Lord, uh, you can't be too lost to be saved. Uh, you can't be too far gone to be brought back. Uh, the prodigal son, uh, Luke chapter 15, had spent all he had. He was at his wit's end. He was at the end of his rope. And he came back to the Father. Bless God, whether you're at the bottom of the pit, whether you're at rock bottom in your life, or you're just looking for a change, there's no better time to come to meet Jesus. I go to Luke uh, chapter 19 this morning, and what we read about is a man named Zacchaeus. And oh, Zacchaeus, and I wanted with all my heart to preach my... I, I've got a favorite message. Now, if you singers got favorite songs, I can have a favorite message. Amen? Uh, I've got a favorite message this morning. Uh, I wanted to preach my favorite message this morning. Uh, God wouldn't allow me to do that. Uh, so I'm just going to hit on Zacchaeus for just a minute. Uh, but we're hearing about this man named Zacchaeus. Uh, amen? He was a tax collector. Uh, he was a publican. Uh, he was a Jew. Uh, but he wanted to see Jesus with everything in him. Uh, he wanted to see Jesus. Uh, but there were some obstacles that man had in his way. I look at a few obstacles that old Zacchaeus had in his way this morning. Uh, the first thing is his profession. I've heard people tell me as a, as a pastor, as a preacher, I can't get saved because of where I work. I can't. Uh, uh, Jeremy and, and Dalton, I often use them as examples. Uh, uh, Jeremy used to be a pipeliner. Dalton still is a pipeliner. And I've had people come to me and they say, boy, I'd like to get saved, but I just, you can't be a Christian in Pipeline. Uh, bless God, where's that written in the Bible? Uh, uh, what chapter or verse is that in? Uh, amen. Uh, they say, well, you know, I'm out there around all those guys. Uh, it's tough. It's difficult. Uh, they're cussing. They're drinking. They're doing all these things. Uh, and it's just too hard to be a Christian. Uh, bless God, you make up your mind uh, that you want to be saved. Uh, you make up your mind. Uh, you want to be a Christian. Uh, and God will remove every obstacle uh, in your way and will provide exactly what's needed in your life. Because of this man's profession, he was already at a disadvantage when it came to coming to know Jesus. What was he? He was a tax collector. By trait, these men that were tax collectors were known to be very greedy. When we read about uh, uh, tax collectors of that time, what those men would do is uh, the Roman government there had control, uh, but they were Jews 
by nationality. Uh, they were Jews by birth. Uh, so they were their own people and they would work for the Roman government uh, and they would go out and they would collect taxes uh, on their own people. Uh, but not only that, uh, they would go out and they would steal uh, from their own people. They would charge them more uh, than they really owed. Uh, and then they would take that portion for themselves and give that which was due to Caesar uh, or back to whoever was in charge then would give back to them uh, what was due them and they would keep for themselves. Uh, so the Bible says that Zacchaeus was a very rich man. Uh, well, he was rich because he'd ripped off all of his family. Uh, he was rich because he ripped off all of his friends. Uh, but he came to a point in his life, uh, he wanted something different. Uh, he wanted something new. Uh, he wanted something uh, that would make him feel better about himself. Uh, and the only answer to his need uh, was Jesus. His profession put him at a disadvantage. That was one obstacle in his life. How others viewed him would be another obstacle in his life. They knew that he was crooked. They knew that he was greedy. They knew that he had taken advantage of them. So he was not a like somebody. And, and I can just see for a minute old Zacchaeus, uh, amen, trying to go through Jericho and trying to find somewhere to see Jesus. Uh, the Bible says he was a short man by stature. Uh, he was a small man. Uh, no doubt he had a little man syndrome, amen. Uh, and no doubt he had a puffed up chest and thought he was somebody. Uh, but I can see him trying to push through the crowd uh, and then just shoving him back, uh, shoving him down, uh, not letting him near them. Uh, why? Because others didn't like him. Uh, amen, it doesn't matter uh, what other people think about you. It doesn't matter how other people see you. Maybe this morning it's time to lay all that aside and just come and know a man named Jesus. His profession and how people viewed him. Two obstacles in his life. And then we've got his pride. We see old Zacchaeus' pride. And the Bible says he was a rich man. Now oftentimes in the Bible we don't see rich men portrayed uh, graciously. We read about the rich young ruler that came to see Jesus, that wanted salvation, that wanted to be saved. And Jesus told him, he said, sell all thou hast and give to the poor and come and follow me. Yeah. And he turned sorrowful away and walked away from Jesus. And Jesus said it'd be easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to see the kingdom of God or to enter into the kingdom of God or the kingdom of heaven. You say, does that mean that a rich person can't get to heaven? No, the Bible says in the book of Mark, uh, it says how hard is it for them that trust in riches. It wasn't that he was a rich man. It was that his trust was in his riches. We see another place uh, where the rich young ruler had come. Uh, amen. He was, he was going to tear down his barns uh, and big, build bigger. Uh, and he took no thought. The Bible says there, take no thought uh, or for the morrow. Uh, amen. He was going to tear down his barns uh, and build bigger. Uh, and that night his soul was required uh, of him. Uh, oftentimes the rich in the Bible uh, were not portrayed uh, the way that God looks at you and I. But that does not mean they couldn't come to know him. They just had to get their priorities straight. I know poor people that need to get their priorities straight. I know middle class people that need to get their priorities straight. I know rich people that need to get their priorities straight. You know what that tells me? Man, as a, as a whole, uh, and bless God, at times in their lives, they've got to get their priorities straight, Clarence. They, they've got to come to a point where they realize, I don't need this stuff. I don't need all these things going on. I just need Jesus. I, I need less of me uh, and more of Jesus. Uh, and we find uh, that in order for Zacchaeus to even lay eyes on Jesus, he had to lose that pride. The Bible says he found a sycamore tree. And he climbed up. Now, what we see as a sycamore tree is not the sycamore tree of the Bible. The sycamore tree of the Bible had real low uh, branches. Uh, it had uh, it was a very small tree and had low uh, low branches, so it wasn't very difficult for him to climb up. But there were some things that he had to leave uh, at the base of that tree. Uh, he left his pride uh, at the base of that tree. Uh, he left his stature uh, at the base of that tree. Uh, he left everything that he thought he was uh, at the base of that tree. Uh, and if you're going to come to know Jesus, uh, you're going to have to do the same thing. Uh, you're going to have to leave who you are aside. Uh, leave that pride. Leave that stature. Uh, how people view you. You've got to leave all that aside uh, to come and find Jesus. We realize that Zacchaeus got in the right place, was in the right place at the right time. You're here on this parking lot this morning. You're at the right place at the right time for Jesus to pass by your way. I don't believe 
as Jesus was walking. Now, this is just awesome for a, about five seconds. I'll get back on the message. I don't believe for a second, Fred, that when Jesus was walking down through the streets, I don't believe He was looking up in every tree. I don't believe He was just looking around to see what was going on. I believe He walked under that tree at that moment and looked up on that branch and saw that man that he came to Jericho to find. Why? Because Jesus, the Bible says, uh, amen, that the shepherd would leave the 99 uh, and come in search for the one. Uh, and I believe this morning, uh, here on this lot, uh, bless God, if you're the only person he lost, uh, he showed up this morning uh, just for you uh, to knock on your heart's door, uh, to pass by your way, uh, to look right down upon you, uh, to let you know there's something better. He had to leave his pride at the bottom of that tree. Jesus looks up at him and says, Zacchaeus, come down and make haste. For today I'm coming to your house. Today. The Bible says, right then. Oh, that's good, Lord. At that very moment, Zacchaeus had a choice to make, Josh. I mean, at that, at that moment, he had a choice to make. Salvation works the same way in our lives. The same exact way in our lives. When God called your name, when He stopped by whatever tree you were hanging out in, at that very moment, you had a choice to make. The Bible says Zacchaeus made haste and came down. Made haste and came down. Now you look around you this morning and what you'll realize is we do not have long. I mean, Jesus is coming back and we don't have long. It's time to make haste. If you don't know Him this morning, it's time to make haste. It's time this morning uh, to come to know Him. It's time this morning uh, to come uh, to trust Him. It's time this morning, uh, bless God, to just give it all up uh, and trust in Jesus this morning. That day Zacchaeus had a divine visitation at his home. And I believe right here on this parking lot this morning, you can have a divine visitation in your car. But you've got to make the right choice. We read in Mark chapter 5, preaching on obstacles. Mark chapter 5, we find a woman who had an issue of blood. Twelve years she was sick. Some obstacles that she had in her life. One would have been disappointment. The Bible says that twelve years, Wayne, she was sick with an issue of blood. So the first disappointment is her health. You say, oh, health. You get sick and see if that don't drag you down. Yeah, I mean, uh, the man flu come rolling around uh, and bless God, wipe out half a church. I mean, just the common cold, uh, take out half the church. Uh, and bless God, uh, you'll get down on yourself. You begin to feel uh, bad. You get down on yourself. No doubt she was disappointed. Then the Bible says she tried many physicians and suffered at their hand. They did not have physicians like you and I have. They did not prescribe her a little pill that was going to fix it all. There was awful, awful things that the physicians did in that day that they would try. And it said that she suffered many things at the hands of these physicians to no avail. They didn't work. So she had suffered. She was sick and she had suffered. And then the Bible says she spent all that she had. So she was broke, she was sick, and she was suffering. No doubt those were major obstacles in her life. But the Bible says in Mark 5 and verse 34, she heard, not she'd seen, not she'd felt, she heard of a man named Jesus. You realize this morning the weight that your testimony carries? I mean, the ability that you have to tell others about Christ and to help them in their life. Amen. I mean, I, I, don't, I don't know that Christian people truly understand because oftentimes I hear them say, uh, I know you've heard this before. Uh, I know you've heard this testimony. Uh, I know you're tired. Of, I'm, I'm never tired uh, of hearing what the Lord's done. Uh, I'm never tired uh, of listening to how the Lord helped, uh, how the Lord provided, uh, how the Lord healed, uh, how the Lord gave. Uh, I never get tired of that. Uh, and you don't ever know who's listening. The Bible says she heard of Jesus. You know what she did? She made a choice. You know what many of you have done this morning? You've made a choice. 
to come because you've heard of Jesus. Because you've heard of what He's done. But hearing of Jesus isn't enough to save you. Just hearing of Him is not enough to save you this morning. You've got to have an experience. Now there may be some obstacles in your life that you've got to overcome to have that experience with Him. But it's time you press through the crowd. That's what the Bible says she had to do. It said the great press was upon Him as He was going through town. That great press was on Him and she had a need. And she was willing to get down and do whatever it took to get to Jesus. Now, you think about this woman's faith. The Bible says she said to herself, if I could just touch but the Him. I didn't realize this morning, Jake, I mean, I didn't realize it until this morning. All she had done was heard of Jesus and she had enough faith in Him already to realize if she could just touch the hem of His garment. Not, I mean, I'm not talking about grabbing a hold of Him. I'm not talking about, uh, bless God, meeting Him face to face. I'm talking about getting as low as she could get uh, and touching out and reaching out and just barely getting a hold uh, of the hem of His garment. Uh, she believed that that would make her whole. Uh, all you've got to have uh, is enough faith to know uh, if I could just get in His presence, uh, if I could just get where He's at, uh, I know He can make a difference. She had obstacles that she had to overcome. And moving quickly this morning, I believe we as Christians, or maybe here you're here this morning lost, you've got obstacles in your life that you've got to overcome. There are some things you've got to overcome. Maybe if you're here this morning and you're lost, maybe it's disappointment in your life, just like it was for the woman with the issue of blood. Maybe you've not lived a luxurious life. I've heard Tony say many times, I grew up and never heard the words, I love you. How difficult that would be in your life. Maybe this morning you've been taken advantage of. Maybe this morning you, you've had uh, relationships that didn't pan out the right way. I don't know what the disappointment is. Maybe it's job, maybe it's family, maybe it's marriages. I don't know what it is. But maybe it's disappointment in your life. You know what I realized this morning? That's just an obstacle for you to overcome. That's just something that the devil's going to try to use to get you to stop what you're doing. Uh, stop trusting. Uh, stop going. Uh, stop trying to find. Uh, stop trying to work for help or find help. Uh, and he can get you to look at those things uh, and not look at Jesus uh, and focus on the disappointment uh, instead of focusing on uh, what could be. Uh, amen. Focusing on the mess uh, and forgetting about the miracle uh, and realize this morning uh, he knows uh, that if you'll trust in Jesus, uh, amen, those disappointments uh, will be turned around. Uh, that mess uh, will be turned around. Uh, that hurt uh, will be turned around. Uh, he knows you'd be helped. Maybe it's disappointment in your life. Maybe you're here this morning. Now the Lord gave me this thought this morning and I'm going to move quickly. Maybe this morning you're here because you got caught. Now think about this. Many times I've seen people come to church because they got caught up in something. They come because all of a sudden their life is all turned upside down. And the life, the Bible says in Numbers 32, be ye sure your sin will find you out. And what's happened is their sin has found them out. And they got into a situation where they're caught. And so they come to church to try to make the outside man feel better. What I read in the book of John chapter 8, what you'll find is this. There was a woman that had been caught in the very act of adultery. And they brought her to Jesus. And they were going to put her to death by the law. They had a right to do that. And they brought her to Jesus to try to tempt him to see what he would do. And he told them, he that's without sin, let him cast the first stone. One by one, the Bible says, they begin to lay down their stones and walk away. Now she was caught, no doubt. And the only reason that she was in the presence of Jesus 
It's because of the situation she had in her life. Do you realize this morning that He gave her the same compassion? That He gave her the exact same compassion even though she had been caught in the situation she was in? She got the same compassion that you and I got when we came to Him? Amen. I mean, He had every right to cut her down. He had every right to talk about her. He had every right to stone her. But the Bible says, neither do I find any fault in you. Go and sin no more. He gave her the same compassion. The very same compassion that you and I got, even though she was only in His presence because she got caught. Maybe this morning you came looking for something to make you feel better on the outside. But what's happening is this. Jesus knows how to fix you on the inside. And because He knows how to fix you on the inside, it doesn't matter why you came. All that matters now is what are you going to do with it? What are you going to do with this grace that He's offering up to you? What are you going to do with this mercy that He's trying to give you? What are you going to do with that? Uh, are you willing this morning uh, to lay all that disappointment aside? Uh, are you willing this morning uh, to lay off aside all that sin, all that hurt, uh, all that's going on in your life and just trust Him? Because He's offering you the same compassion this morning in your life that He offered to me when I came to Him. The very same compassion. Maybe it's disappointment in your life this morning. Maybe it's the way others see you. You know, we allow... Me first. We allow how others view us to affect how we live our lives. People, I, it don't matter to me. You can tell me to your blue in the face. I don't care what people think. Yes, you do. You do. You may not show it outwardly, but deep inside you care. We care what people think. You women care what people think. You got up this morning. You fixed your hair. You put on makeup, you picked out an outfit, and you men are sitting there thinking, yeah, they did. Yeah, and you men got up, and you found something about halfway matched, and you combed your hair, and you got out of bed, and you care what people think about you. Hey, man, maybe this morning what you're struggling with is the way people look at you, is the way that the world views you. You realize this morning that Jacob, whose name is now Israel, who was the founding father of the nation of Israel, you realize that they knew him as deceiver because he had deceived his brother and stole the blessing? That's what, that, that's what he was known as. In fact, the very name Jacob in the Hebrew means deceiver. That's why when God, in Genesis chapter number 20 or 32, that's why whenever he wrestled with the angel of God. Hmm, you realize that now, I don't, I don't know how you believe this morning, and that's okay. I want to give you just one thought. Do you know who Jacob wrestled with? Jesus. Yeah, the Bible says he wrestled that night with the angel of God. Now, I believe all throughout the Bible, uh, and bless God, the angel of God represents Jesus. Uh, and that night, uh, amen, Jacob is in a wrestling match. Uh, and some of you have been coming, uh, and you've been coming every Sunday uh, and hearing the word. Uh, you've been coming every Sunday trying to make the right choice, coming every Sunday uh, trying to get things right in your life. Uh, you know what you're in? You're in a wrestling match uh, with the Lord. Uh, isn't it time to just give up? Uh, isn't it time to just give in? Uh, isn't it time, uh, even though the world looks at you as deceiver, uh, the world's labeled you as this, uh, the world's labeled you as that. Uh, that's not how the Lord looks at you. Uh, that's not how the Lord views you. Uh, he looks at you, uh, and bless God, He sees what you could be. Yeah, amen. As Jacob wrestled with him that night, the Bible says the Lord said, "Let me go." Jacob said, I'll, or the, "Jacob said, I'll not do it till you change me." It's time that we find some people that are willing to grab a hold of the Lord and say, "Lord, Lord, I'll not go anywhere. I mean, I'll not go anywhere till you change me. I mean, till you make that change that I need in my life." Jacob was willing; he knew what he needed, and he was willing to hold on until he got. What he came for. And the Bible says the angel of the Lord touched the hollow 
of his joint uh, and put it out of place uh, and bless God uh, the Bible says Jacob never walked the same uh, again uh, and you get a hold of the Lord uh, bless God you'll not walk the same either uh, you get into, uh, get into that situation in the Lord uh, where he changes you uh, where he takes over uh, and you'll not be the same either uh, you'll not walk the same uh, you'll not talk the same uh, and bless God he changed his name uh, the world saw him as deceiver uh, but bless God uh, Jesus looked at him as redeemed and you and I can be that this morning if we'll trust in him maybe it's how the world looks at you maybe it's disappointments or maybe let's just get right down to it this morning and I'll be finished maybe it's pride do you realize that people are going to hell every single day simply because of pride in their life I've, I've, I grew up in church I've been in church my entire life that doesn't make me holier than anybody else in fact, uh, at times I took it for granted that I was raised in church. I believe if I could just, uh, I can't speak freely, I'm holding the microphone this morning. Uh, I believe if I could just speak freely for a second, I believe at some point we've all taken church for granted. Yeah. Yeah. I believe that. We've all taken that. Well, it's, it's Sunday morning again. Well, it's Sunday night again. Well, it's Wednesday night again. Now, we got people begging to come back to church. Yeah. I mean, we got people that are absolutely, I mean, beat the door down to try to get back. Why? Because we had got to a place where we took for granted what we had. Uh, and I believe tonight, uh, if we're not careful this morning, if we're not careful, uh, I'm blessed God will take for granted what God has given, uh, how God has provided, what God has done. Uh, but I believe uh, there are people that are going to hell every day because of pride in their life. Because the Bible says, God resists the proud and giveth grace to the humble. And the only way that you can come to know Jesus is to humble yourself down. You know, I, I don't know how you were raised. I'll tell you how I was raised. I was raised with a loving father that told me, don't you ever let anybody take advantage of you, push you around. You're not going to be the punching bag for somebody else. So he built up in me this persona that I had to defend myself. And I believe, especially because of the state that we live in, that's how a lot of you were raised as well. He always told me this, don't you ever start a fight, but you be willing to finish it once it starts. So you build that pride up, Doug. That's what, in our flesh, that's what we do. We build this persona up that I'm not going to be pushed around. I'm not going to be told what to do. I'm not going to take anything from anybody. And then we carry that into God's house. And when the Lord says, come to me, or a man of God stands up and preaches something that you don't agree with, that same pride busts up in our life and we don't want to listen to it. But you realize this morning, if we want what God's got, we've got to lay all that aside. I realize this morning, that's tearing down walls in your life that have been built up for years and years and years. But if you want to come to know Jesus, that's exactly what's going to have to happen. That pride is going to have to be laid aside. I've seen people standing in a church pew, and I'm going to be finished. Tyler and Maria, if you guys will go ahead and get ready to come. I've seen people standing in a church pew, Fred, gripping the back of the seat, white knuckles, yeah. tears running down their face, would not come to the altar because they didn't want to humble themselves down and give their life to the Lord. Their, their situation in their life, it wasn't drugs, it wasn't alcohol, it wasn't adultery, it wasn't fornication, it wasn't adultery, it wasn't any of those things. What was the issue that they had going on? It was pride. It was just simply pride. And because they wouldn't lay that down, because they wouldn't get rid of that, Doug, that was something that was hard for me to do. It was something that was hard for me to do. To go up in front of people that I didn't know and kneel at an altar and ask God to forgive me. That was hard. But it was the best decision that I ever made. It was the best decision to know that if I would just trust in Him, if I would just trust in Him, that He would make everything in my life brand new. If I would just lay that side down, that, that pride down aside. Maybe in your life this morning, it's pride. Maybe in your life this morning, it's disappointment. 
Maybe it's in your life this morning, a name that you've gained in the world. Those are obstacles that are standing between you and the Lord. Now, thank you, Lord. That sounds nice. Now, this morning, you can do one of two things. You can climb over, go around, or lay aside that obstacle that's in your way and come to know Jesus or continue to allow it to hinder you in your life. Because until you get rid of that obstacle, whatever it is, until you get rid of that obstacle, you'll never be able to come to know Jesus. And I believe this morning there's somebody on this parking lot as we stand to our feet. There's somebody here this morning. Maybe multiple people here this morning. They needed to hear this message. They needed to know that we have had obstacles in our lives that we had to overcome. Whenever I came back to the Lord, I was 24 years old. When I came back to the Lord. And, and for those of you that say, well, you can't backslide. Well, I did it, so. I, I did. I mean, I know, I know. You say, oh, no, you were saved. You're not going to talk me into that. You're not going to talk me into that. Oh, you were saved at five years old. That means everything's all right. My heart told me I wasn't all right. I knew I wasn't all right. That's right. So what you got to realize this morning is this. Maybe that's you. You know the hardest thing for me to admit, Fred? I had to admit to myself, I was wrong. Yeah. I was wrong. That's not what we... We're human. And our flesh, we're never wrong. We don't do wrong. I tell Danny all the time, I say, I thought I was wrong once. Turned out, just a mistake. You realize this morning, every one of us has fell short. Every one of us has fell short. Every one of us has sinned in our life and had to come back to the Lord and say, God, forgive me. God, help me. God, I was wrong. In order to get to Him this morning, I had to get over myself and trust in Him. Now, if that's you this morning, would you just come? Would you just come this morning and trust in Jesus? As Tyler and Maria sing this morning, if you have a need on this, come to this altar. Right now, come to this altar and give it to the Lord. Uh, Ruth, I'm coming. I, you want prayer? I'm coming right over there right now. And those of you that will, let's go pray with Ruth. Uh, this altar is open. I want you to come this morning. Trust in Jesus. Believe in Jesus. And know this morning, doesn't matter what the obstacle is, God will move that obstacle for you if you'll trust in Him this morning as they sing.
It's just something that gets in our way. It's an obstacle that we've got to overcome. Now, if you need to pray this morning, I'm telling you, you say, I don't know about that. I know that altar works. I don't know about this altar. Well, that's my personal altar out of my office at home. It works. Almost every message I've ever preached in here started right here. What I'm telling you is this. After today, that's going back to my office at home. Why don't you take your opportunity this morning to use it? It works. Whatever the need is. It doesn't have to be salvation this morning. Whatever the need is. Why don't you trust Him? Why don't you come and ask Him? I know the Lord will help you in your time of need if you'll just trust in Him. As they sing the third and fourth verse of this song, why don't you come this morning and just trust in Him as they sing Trusting only in my merit Would I seek that face Heal my wounded, broken spirit Thank you for coming and singing for us. Uh, just appreciate each one. Uh, thankful for a beautiful day in the Lord and just want to thank Him one more time 
for holding the rain off. I uh, want to thank him one more time for being with us through these weeks of, of difficulty and trying to make the right decisions and outside and inside and live stream and YouTube and all the DVD, all that that was done. I just appreciate and we're thankful. Um, tonight, Church Inside at 7 o'clock. Uh, be much in prayer. Inheritance will be here singing for us tonight. Uh, appreciate them coming uh, the, several times while we were outside and coming again tonight. Uh, all are welcome to come. Uh, we will be practicing social distancing and all that stuff. We won't be hugging, shaking hands, and doing all that. Uh, but we're going to have church inside this evening. So come and be with us. Uh, Lord willing, uh, I'll be preaching unless God sends a message with somebody else. And they'll be singing unless God sends singers that have different songs. Amen. Uh, but we just want to do what God would have us to do. But again, we appreciate each one of you that's made your way out here this morning. Uh, we're packed in here pretty tight. So please be careful as you're backing out. Um, look behind you, have somebody help you, whatever it might be. Uh, but again, thankful for each one this morning. Uh, we just want to end with uh, three praise the Lord's here. Just want to thank the Lord one more time for what He's done. Are you ready? Praise, praise the Lord! Lord.